Hello Pisces, thank you for joining me again. If you're a returning subscriber, welcome. If you're new to the channel, thank you for coming. Um, I do hope you enjoy the reading. Please don't forget to like and share or like and subscribe. Um, I have shuffled and laid out the cards already. So um, as the cards are appearing in each house, then those are the um, aspects which are coming to bear for you or this other person that you may be involved with or other people around you at this time. So the um, overall influence um, is uh, Pluto transformation. Um, so I feel there are many elements of this card coming up in your chart this month. So I feel that um, you're going to be seeing a lot of this um, playing out in your life or around you in some way. So um, with Pluto transformation, basically this is an opportunity for you to transform your life at this time. So in some way, in in how whatever you're you're busy with at the moment, there's an opportunity for transformation that is going to be presented for you. Um, but it won't be easy. Um, this is going to be something that you're going to have to really apply yourself to. It's going to require a great deal of self analysis. Um, uh, and what was hidden, anything that was hidden in your life or is hidden in your life, could very well come to the surface now. And that is the nature of Pluto, because Pluto rules the underworld. So. Often something will occur and a secret or some kind of hidden feelings or um, just perhaps uh, it's it's almost like a rising up of yourself, your inner self, which now needs to be, um, you know, to be acknowledged. So it could be that you could also be experiencing a few power struggles around you, either within your life or you're seeing it around you. But endings and beginnings are very strong with this card. So um, control, power, manipulation, all of those things also come in as well. But it could just be that uh, it's your chance now to, to rise up out of difficult circumstances and there may be a few power struggles going on or just you, the struggle to emerge uh, into, a, into a different direction or to take control of your life or to take control of something which needs that now at this time. So in the first house, we have air element communicating. So first house is your house of communication. Uh, sorry, your house of self. So that is everything to do with your physical body, um, your um, personality, your characteristics, what you project outwards to others, so what they see when they see you. Um, it's everything to do with that. It's also your, your physical body, your vitality, and your life force. Um, how you're making your way in the world every day. Um, so what you're presenting, what you're expressing at this time. So with air element communicating, that's exactly what it is. It's, you know, you're going to come across as being communicative or wanting to communicate in some way. Um, you could also be, um, uh, you could be also just more, be more expressive than you have been previously. Um, so it's also about, because it's an air element, it's, this is a, a mental sign, um, a mental element. So this is, all about communication, all forms of communication, but it can also be thinking things through. So actually weighing up, turning things over in your mind until you've decided what it is that um, needs to be done. So, but it also is about putting what you want into words. So this is very important that documents, contracts, all written things are, are indicated with this card. So you may need to put something, push something forward uh, in a written form to make it happen. It's a form of manifestation, which is very much what this card is about. So this card is all about manifestation. So what do you want to manifest? You don't want to manifest negative things. You don't want to be projecting that. You don't want to be aiming for that. You want to be aiming for positive things, things that are going to come back to you exactly how you want them. So how you think, how you talk to yourself, how you talk to others, how you, what you, what you express, in any way, and it can be body language or verbal or written in any form, um, is all must be positive at this time to bring you what you need. So it's a form of magic, this. So it could also be that you are possibly overthinking something um, or you are emotionally detached at this time. So just um, think about that. Um, but it may, the, the emotionally detached sensation may be necessary at this time so that you can see clearly. And, and I feel with certain things that are going on in your chart, this may be very, very, uh, that may just be how it's unfolding for you. So you want to see things clearly. Uh, and this will help you with that. Um, it's, it's clear thinking. Um, it really does open the mind. 
Um, also, this is about quick thinking. So you may come across as, as that, or you may need to harness that into your life at this time. It's about being ingenious. Um, you could also be possibly embarking on a new path of some kind, or you may want to do that. Um, and it's all about that. It's the formulation of that. What do you want to manifest for yourself? Air travel is in, indicated with this card, so that may be appropriate for you. Perhaps you need to do air travel to get what you want, or you need to, to, to go on a trip of some kind to in search of what you want or to um, to activate something. Um, it's a very ambitious, it's a very ambitious energy as well. So you may need that to, to bring about the other things that you need to do. Um, this card is also very much about, um, technology and science and, um, all of those aspects may come in for you. Perhaps you're learning a new form of technology. Perhaps you are, um, sort of undertaking a, uh, a, a new form of science or perhaps you're studying it uh, or you're just looking at something in depth. It could be research, but it's all mental mental energy and you're going to come across like that, um, really thinking things through and need to think things through at this time. In the second house, we have um, Neptune Sacrifice. The second house is your house of income. Uh, so that's all the money that's coming in for you, however it comes in for you. It's also the house of self-worth. And it's the house of um, your values, what you value in your life, your value systems, what you value in yourself, what you value in others. And also in your, um, it's also about possessions, ownership. So um, everything that is around you or that you, that you value, it, it falls under this card, uh, this house. So <clears throat> with this card, uh, Neptune Sacrifice, Neptune normally rules um, Pisces. So um, it's, it's very much your own energy coming in here. This is your natural ruler. So um, you will be you will know um, Neptune very well, and you will know the influences of Neptune very well. So in this house, it could be that you need to sacrifice something for the greater good, or you are uh, being uh, you're putting yourself in a position where you are making too many sacrifices. In other words, you are not putting yourself first. You've become um, sort of almost like a doormat. You've, you're allowing uh, aspects of your life um, which do not enable you. They're not enabling you and they're not giving you power. So it could be that. Either way, um, it could also be that you just need to assert your boundaries at this time because this is one of your money houses, all right? So if you're wanting to do things, if, you want to, if you're really wanting to make transformative changes in your life, Quite often you either need support or you need income or you need something to give you um, the, the foundation in order to move your dreams forward. And in this case, you may need to assert your boundaries. Um, you don't want to be sub sabotaging yourself or, or you know, the, the sign of self undoing. That is Pisces. So be careful that you are not undermining your own efforts, you undermining your own dreams. Uh, um, undermining your own um, attempts to create income and so on. Um, this can also be a bit about rose-tinted spectacles. You may have illusions about things. You may um, be confused about things. You may be seeing something in not a true light because um, Neptune can draw a veil over things as well. So just be aware of that. Be aware of illusions, falling under the, the illusions or having illusions about the use of your money or whatever money is coming in for you. Um, big dreams that have no basis, things like that. Um, be careful of victim mentality as well, either in yourself or you may be seeing it around you as well. Um, it could also be that your energy is being drained by another. Um, somebody who is taking from you um, and um, that puts you into victim consciousness. Um, so this person could be draining you of resources, of your self-worth, uh, of your of your possessions. Lots of things could be happening or it could just be purely energetic. All right. So be aware of that. Um, you need to get clear on certain things. You need to get clear on your actions and your intentions when it comes to your your um, your income and your you know your self worth, which is can be int intimately connected to that, and also to your values. You need to be very clear at this time um, because um, you know this affects money, uh, which is going to basically fuel where you need to go in your life, what you what it is you want to do. Um, there could be some very deceptive circumstances going on. Um, or just things are not clear, all right? So you must make them clear. You must endeavor to be clear about everything that you're doing. This is why you need the air energy at this time. Then in the third house, we have Saturn Return Age. 
So um, this Saturn goes around um, all of us uh, once once every 29 years, more or less. So normally at the age of 29, you feel the effects of the, the Saturn return, and um, then it comes back again uh, in your late 50s. So with with this is just an energy coming in for you in your third house, but it's implying a return, which is always about hindsight. It's always about looking back. Um, and in this case, um, it's the wisdom of the age. It could also be physically feeling older or feeling more mature. So it can be that. Um, but usually with Saturn, um, there are some truths that have to be have to be faced. And because this is your house of communication, third house is all forms of communication. That's written, verbal, body language. It's also the house of contracts and documents. It's also the house of short trips. So with Saturn return age, this is about, this is a wisdom card, but it's also um, a, a facing truths card. So it's a face it card, um, hard truths being communicated or, so that's either you're communicating or you are receiving communication, which has the hard truths element to it. It could also be regrets, all right? So what should have been expressed or what should have been done? It's got that energy about it. So you really are having a long, hard look about how you're expressing yourself. It's linked to documents and contracts of all kinds. Um, but it's normally about expression uh, or how you're expressing yourself. Now, this can be to people um, in your environment, obviously, anybody. It can also be um, sort of a wider audience or a larger audience if that is appropriate for you. Uh, but it can also be to specific people, which is general family members, aunts, aunt, um, uncles, cousins, siblings, um, and it can also be to neighbors if that may be appropriate for you. So, but this is normally, um, communication based, expression based, and this is going to be hard. This that's coming in for you. So either you are expressing some hard truths to whoever, um, or you're going to be receiving it in some way. So it could also be that you're looking back with hindsight now and you're gaining wisdom and understanding about what has gone down in the past. You can look at the past, you can draw knowledge and wisdom from that uh, and, and move yourself forward based on that, um, but you can't live in the past. So make sure that you don't wallow there. Um, so this is, this, is an, this is a card of correction. It's also a card of release and redirect your energies or re release and redirect what you are saying, or what you're trying to achieve in the communication house. So, but it's got an element of correction about it. So what has been going on in the past? If you've been unhappy and it hasn't worked, it hasn't stood the test of time, or you feel like you've lost opportunities or like you're running out of time, now is your time to correct, release, and redirect. So <clears throat> when you do that, when you realize what has gone down and now you can redirect yourself, that is your authentic self coming out. When you start to do things for yourself, so you take back your power. Um, you are responsible for your own goals. We all are. So if you have given your power away to another, it's time to take it back now and redirect it into what it is you want to do. Um, it may feel like it's too late, but it's never too late. Okay, so there's some form of expression going on here. On here. Um, it's going to be hard and you will have to really apply yourself to uh, maybe on an ongoing basis to actually free yourself from something so that you can now move yourself forward uh, through a bit of hard work, but you can move yourself forward because once you've once you've got through that and you start laying firm foundations, the, the, you start having potential for achievement. Uh, and that's going to be important for you right now. In your fourth house, you have void, of course, moon missing. So fourth house is the house of your home and your family. So this is your home. It's your physical home, but it can also be your um, uh, atmosphere in the home and the people in your home. It's also um, the uh, your relationship to your um, ancestry, your ethnic identity, your family, your roots, your foundation, where it is you've come from. So with Void, of course, Moon missing, things are not what they seem with this card. The moon between when it's changing signs goes through a quiet period where there, it's dark and it's kind of a shadow period. So <clears throat> what it's saying to you that in this house, perhaps it may not be the whole month. It may just be a period during the month, perhaps a week, something like that. Um, and it's saying to you, take no action at this time on, on the things you really want to launch or, or, or do or initiate. Just... Uh, just wait uh, until the energies have shifted. So take no new action during this period. Rest, uh, sleep, 
dream uh, and plan what you want to do. Uh, it's almost like a, it's a pause before action. So um, things are not what they seem. If you try to launch or, 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 or do something um, important to you, at this time, while this is in uh, in action, it will probably be a wasted effort. You won't get the desired result. So <clears throat> it's best to wait until the energies have shifted. Um, things just don't work, or they don't. You don't get the. You get a wrong result, or no result at all, um, or, or or things get cancelled, or they get delayed, or things they just don't work. Basically, um, so you want to put your energy into things that are going to work. Um, and, uh, you need to, you need to surf the energies and wait until the, the period has passed, uh, that sort of shadow period. It's a very good time to, to formulate in your mind what it is you want to do, uh, to, to, to go over your plans and your dreams, uh, and, and then wait for the, wait for the, the next wave to come. Then in the fifth house, we have Libra Eye Balance. Fifth house is the house of children, your children or other children you are associated with. Uh, it's also about uh, conception and everything to do with children. Uh, <clears throat> but it's also to do with um, your creativity. So this is your brand, your method of expression, uh, every, all creative projects you may be involved in. But it can also be artistry as well. So everybody is creative, but not everybody is artistic. So... It covers all of that, uh, however it, it plays out in your life. Um, it's also um, the house of love affairs, and it's the house of recreational activities of all kinds. So um, this can be anything that is, that is a, a fun and enjoyable for you and pleasurable. Um, and um, it's also the um, – it can have a risk element to it, so that can cover gambling and uh, – stock market activities and so on. So anything fun, outgoing, outdoorsy, any kind of activity which uh, or recreational activity which is enjoyable for you falls under the fifth house. So <clears throat> with Libra Eye Balance, um, this is the romance card. It is uh, the marriage or the partner card or the engagement card, but it's falling in your fifth house. So it's possible that you may um, be getting involved in a love affair of some kind, or it could just be a love affair with a project that a creative project that you're involved in, or it could be um, a love affair with yourself, um, because this brings in a very romantic energy. And you don't have to be in a partnership to be romantic. You can enjoy a lot of romantic activities on your own, or in in and just in in your home. Fresh flowers, beautiful fabrics, lovely food, luxuries, things like that. It's all romantic. But this card is indicating that a partnership. Is beneficial for you at this time. So some sort of partnership or linking up with another in this fifth house is going to be appropriate. So it could be your children that are involved with this, or perhaps it is, um, as I said, a love affair, or it could be um, a creative project you want to get involved in, and linking up with somebody else will help you, or it's a recreational activity. So it's mutual support, um, mutual enjoyment, um, and um, it's all anything romantic will fall in with this. The arts, anything to do with the arts, whether this is actual art or artistry or the stage, the theater, um, anything to do with the arts, any form of artistic um, activity. It's things like concerts, music, uh, even fashion and beauty fall in under this. So you could be enjoying a wide range of activities uh, around that, or you're linking up with another to enjoy these activities, um, however it plays out for you. Um, if you are already in a partnership which falls under the guise of, of uh, um, a love affair or uh, some other partnership which you're involved in in the fifth house, it may be that you need to examine balancing your needs with theirs. Perhaps there's a bit of imbalance at this time. In other words, your needs are not being met 100%, but theirs are. So you need to balance things. You need to put your, your needs first uh, as well, put them forward so that the, so that a balance is created. It could also be that in this house, some sort of mediation or negotiation is required. Legal matters do come in with this card. So it could be a legal matter that you're involved in, but there are contracts involved, negotiation, mediation. Fairness is also very much a liberal trait, okay? Balancing of the scales, fairness. Um, it could also be that you're required to make a decision in this house about something, uh, and this is saying to you, make the decision. Um, this also um, can be just about good taste as well. 
So you may be exhibiting that in some way. Perhaps you express it uh, uh, creatively. Um, or it, All of these elements could be affecting your children as well. Perhaps you're seeing it in their life.